Good day, everyone, and welcome to our webinar on improving sanitation data systems in South Asia. To start, we are going to hand over to today's moderator, Miramita. Thank you, Persis. Uh, it's great to have this webinar uh, on, this is sort of on demand made available to on the IWA Connect Plus platform and IWA network website with presentation slides and other information. The speakers are, will be responsible for securing copyright permissions for any work that they present, and which they are not, if they are not the legal copyright holder. And the opinions, hypotheses, conclusions, recommendations in these presentations and other materials are their so sole responsibility of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect IWA opinion. Just to give a, before we actually start on the webinar, there are two facilities that are provided. One is chat box and the other is a question and answer box. Please feel free to participate actively in this and the attendees microphones are muted, but you can participate through this activity and your questions will be taken up to the extent that it's possible. Uh, this is also part of the Global Inclusive Urban Sanitation Initiative of the IWA. This is, it focuses particularly on inclusive sanitation service goals and the service systems that are required to achieve them. And it emphasizes that it's not enough to focus on only infrastructure and technology, but look beyond to other aspects. And the major aspect that today we'll be discussing is on looking at data systems that are absolutely essential for monitoring of these services. Uh, we had done, in fact, a webinar at the last uh, IWA event in Kigali, uh, and which focused exactly on the same topic, on improving data systems for sanitation. There was very active participation and some of the speakers that are there today, in fact, were also participating in that. Uh, and we had contributions from Bangladesh and uh, from Uganda at that workshop, at that seminar. So this is really a continuation of that workshop to take forward the discussions and particularly focusing on inclusive sanitation agenda and looking at sanitation whole sanitation service chain and sanitation systems that look at not only sewerage as was in the past, but also look at on-site sanitation systems. We are going to have four speakers and I will introduce them uh, as we go along, but they are from Rick Johnson from WHO, Shishir Vishwas from DPHE Bangladesh, Rajit Toza from Nepal, DWSFM, and Adit Aditi Dwivedi from CWASEP here in India. So this is broadly the agenda. We will have first, uh, after the welcome, we'll have a presentation by Rick uh, from WHO JMP on the global efforts particularly. Then we will have the presentation from Bangladesh looking at data system strengthening for sanitation, the activities that are ongoing in Bangladesh by Shishir Kumar. Rajit Toza then will present for NWASH, MIS, and the activities that are ongoing in Nepal. And lastly, not the least, not last but not the least, the presentation from Aditi Dwivedi from here at our institute, CWASEP, looking at cases from India where similar activities have been going on. And we'll end with question and answer discussion to the extent possible. So I'll now invite Rick to have the first presentation. Uh, Rick is, we are really fortunate to have Rick Johnson join us for this webinar. Rick has been with WHO for over a decade and leads the work on sanitation for the JMP. He has been at the forefront in developing approaches to respond to the new thinking in sanitation. And on a more personal note, Rick has always been very open to feedback and discussions. Whenever we approached him for any work, any activities, he's always uh, there to help us. Uh, I would request Rick to then start the presentation. 
thanks so much, Mira, for the kind words. And it's always been uh, a pleasure to engage with you as well. Um, so I am Rick Johnston. I'm with the WHO. I lead the WHO side of the Joint Monitoring Program, which is joint with UNICEF. Uh, my colleague, Tom Slaymaker, leads on that side. And today I wanted to talk about uh, our work on monitoring sanitation at the global level. Good. So last year, the JMP published a progress report, um, and you can see from the bar charts on the right there, um, I'm sorry, the legend is hidden, but the light green is basic sanitation and the dark green is uh, safely managed sanitation. So in 2022, about 57% of the global population used safely managed sanitation services. It was higher in urban than in rural areas, but that means that there were about three and a half billion people who didn't uh, have safety managed sanitation services, including 419 million practicing open defecation. So the data coverage um, continues to grow from report to report. We had estimates for 135 countries in last year's report that represent about 86% of the global population. So that's pretty high um, coverage. It also allows us to look at trends and we can see that the rate of progress historically has not been fast enough to get to 100% by 2030. In fact, to reach that level, we would have to be moving five times faster than the historical rate of progress. So there's definitely need for acceleration. I just wanted to remind people about the definitions. Um, the JMP uses this service ladder with different service levels ranging from no service at all and open defecation up to safely managed at the top. The top three rungs, safely managed, basic, and limited, those are all households that are using improved sanitation facilities. If they're shared, it counts as a limited service. If they're not shared, it's a basic service. But in order to be safely managed, there are different ways to be counted as safely managed. It has to be improved and not shared, not shared first, but then it could be wastewater that's treated offsite. That's through a sewer connection that reaches a treatment plant that uh, provides at least secondary treatment. Or it could be an on-site sanitation facility that actually contains the wastes safely and the wastes are either emptied and treated offsite. You can think about fecal sludge management and trucks and FSTPs, or it's contained, but it's not emptied uh, and it's treated and disposed of in situ. So we call those three different pathways into safely managed sanitation. And I'll talk a little bit more about them on following slides. Um, the JMP has a website where you can look at country data or regional data. Um, there's a little dashboard below where you can see the six countries in IWA South Asia region. Um, for three of those countries, Bangladesh, India, and Nepal, there were enough nationally representative data to, to produce estimates for safely managed sanitation. And in those three countries, it was possible to have also an urban rural disaggregation, which always tells uh, a better picture because you can really see which populations are having services and which ones are not. Um, also for Pakistan, you can see one of the bars has dark green. That's because there were enough data to make an estimate for safely managed sanitation in rural areas, but not in urban areas. Whereas the other three countries, Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Sri Lanka, we didn't have sufficient national information, um, either at the national scale or urban or rural, um, to get safety managed. But we did have enough to track the other rungs, so basic, limited, unimproved, and open defecation. So um, what's missing then? What, what are the data that are needed? Well, first, uh, I wanted to show what, the, what types of improved sanitation facilities are being used in these countries. And I know the colors aren't very different here on this graph, but the dark green, um, darkish green, represents improved latrines. The middle color is septic tanks, and the lightest color at the bottom is sewer coverage. And the thing that you can see quickly from, from this graph of these six countries is that sewer coverage is not very high in any of these countries. Um, it's always higher in urban areas. In rural areas, it's, it's negligible in these countries, except for Pakistan, which seems to have about 8% of the rural population connected to, to sewer lines. Um, and indeed, in Pakistan, the urban coverage at 62% is the highest region in the region. For all of the other countries, even in rural, even in urban areas, we're talking about you know, less than half, maybe up to a third, a quarter of the population having sewer connections. And what that means is that, okay, it's possible to have safely managed sanitation through sewer connections and uh, if there are national data on wastewater treatment plants, but the most, the majority of the population doesn't have that. 
they're using on-site sanitation. So that has different data implications. It means you need to know, well, are those on-site sanitation facilities really functioning? Are they containing waste? Are they filling up? What happens when they fill up? When they get emptied, where does the waste go? If they don't get emptied, do they get um, buried and stored in situ or do they get um, unsafely handled? So that, that's a very different kind of data question then. And I, uh, just before I leave this, I wanted to mention also that not only is on-site sanitation higher than sewer sanitation, growth in on-site sanitation is higher than growth in sewer sanitation at the global level, even in urban areas. Um, I'm not sure about the six countries in this region. So I mentioned data coverage and data gaps. Um, at the first two rungs here show for the, these six countries, the, the the basic um, indicators that were used in the MDGs of improved sanitation and shared sanitation data are widely available. This is routinely captured in all kinds of household surveys um, and we have data trends. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I went the wrong way on the slide. Here we go. So improved and shared sanitation, full data available. For wastewater treatment um, for the sewer population, only India um, were we able to find nationally representative data about uh, wastewater treatment from, from centralized wastewater treatment plants. I've grayed out rural because the rural coverage is so low with sewer, but still it would be nice if nationally representative data on wastewater treatment, centralized wastewater treatment were available for the other countries, even though sewer coverage is not very high in urban areas, still it's growing. And as we saw in Pakistan, it's already quite high. Then the next two rungs about um, whether on-site sanitation facilities are contained and either emptied and removed off-site or safely treated in situ, we see that in none of the countries do we have nationally representative data on what happens when these, these septic tanks, these pit latrines are emptied and taken off site. We have a lot of nice examples of a few municipalities, a few FSTPs um, that are either working really well or maybe aren't really working well, but we haven't found um, a national picture yet for any of these six countries. Um, so hopefully in the future that data gap could be filled. Whereas safely treated in situ, we do have examples of countries collecting nationally representative data through household surveys, such as the, the multiple indicator cluster surveys, the mix that have been fielded in Bangladesh and Nepal and Pakistan, or in other national surveys like the India National Sample Survey or the Bangladesh National Hygiene Survey, both of those from 2018, that collect data on containment and emptying and what happens when these systems are emptied. So the bottom line then is that safely managed uh, sanitation data were only available for the countries basically that had data on um, containment and safe treatment in situ. And that's because that's the dominant form of sanitation used by people in those countries. Um, that's why for Pakistan, we don't have safely managed sanitation because most people are using sewer connections and we haven't found you know, national data on wastewater treatment. Okay. So how to fill these gaps? Household surveys are one tool. It's not the only tool, but it's one tool. And I mentioned the mixed surveys. Uh, they now contain three questions about containment. Uh, what does your, does your septic tank, does your pit latrine, does it have an outlet pipe? What does that connect to? Has your septic tank or pit latrine have overflowed or flooded or, or collapsed during the last year? So those kinds of data can tell us if the systems are effectively containing wastes. Then there are also questions about emptying practices, some of which are leading towards safe management and some are not. So if people say that they've never emptied it, okay, that can count as safely managed. Uh, if they've emptied it and then they've buried it nearby in a covered pit or a covered trench, that can also count as safe management. Um, if they say it was emptied, but then it was uh, discharged into an uncovered pit or a water body, clearly that's not safety managed sanitation. Uh, if they say it was emptied and removed off-site, it could be safely managed, but you don't know. Then you would need to have additional information about you know, the trucks and the treatment plants that the households uh, aren't in a position to give. So you would have to combine that with other data. So we've had a project for the last uh, four years now um, called Safely Managed On-Site Sanitation that tries to look at all these steps of the sanitation and what type of sanitation chain and what types of data could be used to, to plug gaps along the way. Uh, looking at containment, emptying, transport, treatment, and disposal. Uh, we finished uh, a phase one set of pilot countries, including Bangladesh. 
um, and are now working in a set of phase two pilots, including Nepal. So um, this region is definitely well represented in our SMOS project. And there are a number of resources available on the website that you can see there. Just some key findings from the SMOS project are that there's a lot of FSM programming around what happens when the, the trucks come and they empty the containments and where do they go and what kind of treatment happens and what about the sludge? But um, there's less focus on what happens before the trucks come. You know, is that containment really containing waste or does it really have uh, an open um, pipe that's leading to an open drain? Because you can have the best FSM in the world, but if that tank has been um, discharging untreated waste into the environment uh, before the truck comes, you know, um, it's, it's a hazard and it's certainly not safety managed sanitation. Um, and both in Bangladesh and Serbia, um, inspections of the facilities found that many of them were not safely containing wastes. In Bangladesh, there have been also new questions in about containment and leakage in a new big national survey that, that should give additional information about containment in that country. Um, I think I'm going to skip the details here, but just to note that through the SMOS pilots, we found that it's important to distinguish between the global indicators, which are relatively simple and few, and the local indicators, which are necessary for, for national monitoring purposes or local monitoring. So things like groundwater risk, um, safety to workers, PPE, um, um, numbers of, of, of uh, years of operation, the size of the tank. That's all really important national information. None of that is necessary for safety managed sanitation at a global level. And in fact, the global systems couldn't possibly accommodate that much detail because each country will have its own different systems. So uh, that was a key finding of the pilot was to understand which bits are necessary for global and which bits are necessary for local. Um, another key finding is that we need data along the entire sanitation chain from the type of facility to the emptying treatment and uh, transport, but different data sources can serve uh, for those different stages. And when you're closer to the facility and the containment, the data are more reliable if they really come from households themselves through a questionnaire or some kind of inspection by someone coming to visit it more than from regulators or, or administrative data. But once the wastes leave the, the household and we get into emptying transport and treatment, the household doesn't know what's happening there. And the better sources of data are coming from administrative sources or regulators. So the trick is to be able to combine those to make one coherent story. Um, on sanitation inspections, the WHO and the JMP have been working together to, to come up with these simple checklists to visit sanitation facilities and see are there risks, are there corrective actions that could be taken. There's been a lot of experience with this in water infrastructure, and now we're looking at uh, developing similar tools for assessing sanitation infrastructure. And those could be used to monitor compliance with regulatory requirements or to perform risk assessments or to track progress in a project. Um, and we see these as a key tool for local authorities to use to, to strengthen and upgrade um, sanitation facilities. For instance, in, a, in an ODF program to monitor against slippage and to look at higher levels of service. And finally, we see that regulatory authorities are a key um, tool or stakeholder to, to, to collect this type of information, either directly collecting it themselves or harvesting it from other partners. They have the mandate to advise on the status of the sector. The mandate in many cases includes not just sewer connections, but also uh, non-sewered sanitation. Um, and we do see many regulatory authorities are expanding their, their work to explicitly cover non-sewered sanitation as well. And that creates new data challenges. Um, I, I know we're gonna hear from Nepal about NWASH and the, the, the ambition there to build a national MIS that includes the sanitation services, but also in Bangladesh and India, I know you have really advanced um, database systems. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing those experiences. Just wanted to mention that globally, we do engage with regulators around the world and also with regional um, networks of regulators. There's a very strong one in Africa called Esawas, and I think there could be some value or interest in maybe establishing such types of networks in, in South Asia or East Asia, um, where there's a lot of interesting work happening. So with that, I, I thank you, and I turn back to the moderator, I think, for the next presentation.
thanks Nick, very much uh, for a amazing overview of all the activities that have been done by WHO in improving the whole monitoring system. And I think your reference at the end uh, to looking at uh, national data system is certainly something that actually hopefully will be highlighted by our next set of speakers. So thank you very much, Rick. Uh, I'm not sure about regulators in this region, but maybe it will come up in the discussions during the presentations and after that. Uh, certainly in Africa, it is relevant, but we'll have to see what kind of systems do we need for South Asia. So thanks, Rick, again. Uh, I will now like to invite uh, Dr. Shishir Biswas. He's an executive engineer with the Department of Public Health Engineering in Bangladesh. He's been involved in establishing establishment of web-based sanitation and waste management dashboard of, for 61 district towns and integrated management, so what is known as IMIS, uh, that system in Bangladesh. He, so he really has the kind of experience that we were talking about that is needed for country level uh, monitoring systems. Previously, he was also engaged in many research projects with Bangladesh University of Engineering and Technology, BUET, and he has uh, impressive uh, background in terms of civil engineering and uh, master's degree in that. So let me invite uh, Shishi to make his presentation on Bangladesh. Uh, thank you very much, uh, moderator. Uh, this is Shishir Kumar Vishesh, uh, Executive Engineer, Department of Public Health Engineering. Now, uh, thank you very much for uh, inviting me for uh, sharing my experience uh, on data system strengthening for sanitation in Bangladesh. So, so uh, the government of Bangladesh uh, has been actively pursuing uh, for national development goals uh, through the Smart Bangladesh. 2041 agenda emphasizing inclusive development as the country aims to achieve the SDG 6.2 in 2030 agenda for safely managed sanitation. The importance of public data system has grown. The national sanitation dashboard, as I mentioned, uh, and the integrated municipalities and city corporations uh, System information were established in 2019 and 2020, enhancing functions such as investment, shaping, planning, sustainable management, and uh, monitoring of sanitation system. Despite this, it forces challenges like data fragmentation and uh, lack of standardization persist, leading to a digital divide and hindering access to wide range uh, of users. And the right side, uh, some uh, picture is here. The uh, we have, I mean, under uh, DPHG, uh, we have conducted a comprehensive uh, survey for extracting uh, sanitation data, specifically for a fecal sludge management system and uh, municipal solid waste management system in uh, 53 district towns, municipalities in Bangladesh, and eight city corporations. Uh, most of the people, I mean, urban people remains here uh, under a, a feasibility study project uh, and uh, found a uh, nice database from that and uh, incorporated all of those in our national sanitation database. Uh, that was the uh, basic study. And you can say that uh, first study uh, for highlighting specifically for uh, sanitation in urban sanitation in Bangladesh. So. Uh, before going to uh, my main uh, topic, so here is some information uh, conducted by Bangladesh Bureau of Statistics. Uh, our census just uh, completed in 2021. According to the census, there is the water supply statistics, the safely managed water supply system in 2023 is uh, near about 71.22%. And uh, uh, if you consider the sanitation system, uh, Apart from the safely managed sanitation system, uh, we have the basic sanitation 69.68, limited 23.95, unimproved 5.43. But what I'm telling that uh, apart from the uh, safely managed sanitation, because uh, still now we are uh, really working on the 
shared latrine. Uh, those those uh, are uh, really improved and we have provided uh, uh, different facilities under different projects. Uh, uh, that is 25.9%, but uh, according to the JMP report, uh, the supplement of sanitation in uh, Bangladesh is uh, only 39%. So there is still now a gap. So uh, now Bangladesh government uh, has uh, introduced the concept that is Smart Bangladesh. A Smart Bangladesh will be affordable, sustainable, inclusive, knowledge-based, uh, intellectual, and uh, innovative, anchored for four pillars. Smart citizen, smart economy, smart government, the government, and uh, smart society. The previously the vision uh, for economic emancipation, and uh, now the target for reaching in 2041, the cultural emancipation, non-communal, progressive, inclusive, and economically developed smart Bangladesh. Now, where is the uh, water supply and sanitation in this uh, concept? that is the uh, smart city service and uh, our government concept, uh, the, all the urban facilities need to be provided for all the rural areas. That's why uh, the smart city sectors, uh, water and sanitation services are very, very much important. So the pledges uh, from 2024 to 2028, the efforts will be uh, intensified to enhance the safe water supply in sewage system with plans to make the water supply system environmentally friendly by 2028. Waste management uh, will be established up to district, to Pojala and union level. One thing I need to mention that in Bangladesh, you know that the very uh, small uh, country, uh, land is really scarce here. So uh, separately uh, uh, providing facilities for sanitation only, uh, non sewer sanitation system, also a central sewer system, is very difficult. That's why uh, our government is thinking for integrated uh, uh, development activities, uh, considering the municipal solid waste management uh, and also the Pegasus management system uh, for both urban, peri-urban and rural areas. The comprehensive action plan has been initiated to establish safe water resources, tall water treatment plants, implement waste management and uh, ensure hygiene sanitation system for every household in uh, rural areas. And decentralization of the powers, uh, actually the delegations of powers of local government institutions, uh, specifically our city corporations, municipalities, uh, union level and upojala level and uh, jila level, uh, those are very, very much important. Otherwise, the accountability, transparency of data and uh, uh, real time uh, development activities uh, for all uh, will not be possible. That is also very important for uh, Bangladesh government. So now, according to the uh, Statistics Act 2013, uh, our Bangladesh Bureau of Statistics is the only national statistical office in the country. They actually collect data, uh, census data, uh, and also data of different uh, uh, segments, different attributes. Uh, and uh, also, uh, as uh, I have mentioned, that for water supply, sanitation, uh, urban, uh, rural, peri-urban, all of those. But uh, uh, you know that uh, it is not uh, uh, really possible uh, for only Bangladesh uh, Bureau of Statistics to collect uh, data only by themselves. They share data from different other organizations and Department of Public Health Engineering since uh, works uh, throughout the country for providing the services of water supply, sanitation, or waste management, drainage system. They, uh, we share our uh, basic data, collected data. Every year we are collecting uh, through different project activities and also from our revenue activities. Uh, we share those data to our uh, Bangladesh Bureau of Statistics and they really update their data every year. So data governance uh, framework they have established uh, very, very much important because only data, any types of data collection is not at all to present and uh, uh, represent uh, any uh, specific services uh, uh, that uh, can be uh, said that yes, it is uh, the national database, it is not possible. So screening and uh, under a framework screening and uh, uh, that is also very, very much important. We have the data structures, data architectures, uh, data modeling and design, data storage and uh, operational, 
data security, data integration, and uh, interoperability. All of those are really integrated on uh, this uh, data governance. We have other regulations and uh, frameworks, uh, how to execute, how to utilize this, and sharing and uh, uh, utilizing to different uh, government agencies and non-government agencies. So uh, here is uh, a flow diagram. Uh, you know that we are also uh, looking for uh, achieving the goals of uh, sustainable development goals. So uh, our Bangladesh Bureau of Statistics uh, actually follows a process, the survey census, administrative records, and uh, innovative approach, absolutely. And they provide those data. Now we have the access to information and some other uh, divisions. Uh, monitoring and uh, controlling by our uh, prime minister's office. We have the SDG cells. So after uh, their technical support, their screening and validation, those goes to our online platform that is the uh, SDG tracker. And those are also shared to the respective uh, agencies. Uh, I'll uh, share it uh, the, uh, some slides, uh, the who are actually uh, getting those informations and sharing uh, their respective informations uh, to uh, this uh, specific sector, I mean, what sector. So uh, as I mentioned that uh, the mainly controlled by our SDG uh, affairs under prime minister's office. So Department of Public Health Engineering and some other uh, WASAs and city corporations have received some specific designated activities, some assignments. Uh, for uh, achieving the goals of uh, 6.1, SDG 6.1, 6.1.2, and also uh, supporting with the WASH, that uh, those are some environmental statistics, household survey of uh, health sanitation in disaster prone areas in Bangladesh and uh, municipalities uh, and Poroshavas, I mean, uh, municipalities and city corporations, waste management and sanitation data. Uh, we have to. Uh, collect uh, those specific informations uh, under a very specific questionnaire uh, with using uh, different tools and innovative ideas from uh, rural levels, urban levels, municipalities and city corporations uh, and preserve it uh, to our DPHS platform. You know that we have already established a, a citywide inclusive sanitation cells we have integrated server and a connection uh, with that server to our uh, Bangladesh Bureau of Statistics for uh, screening and next level of uh, activities. So uh, again, I'm uh, going to uh, the feasibility study we have completed based on the uh, criteria of citywide inclusive sanitation. We have our uh, framework, FSM frameworks and also implementation plan. Uh, selecting different criteria and uh, our indicators for series, a uh, comprehensive uh, study uh, had been conducted during 2019-2020 and uh, up to June 2021 and accumulated all of those data in our uh, open source uh, uh, website that is Sandboard, S-A-N-B-O-A-R-D. So anybody in any uh, other country can easily be uh, access uh, the uh, information of uh, the sandboard, uh, what types of data actually we have accumulated in it. Uh, sheet flow diagram also, and uh, the flow pattern of uh, sheets from uh, the containment system from generation till the disposal system uh, with the Shanky diagram can easily be uh, identified, including the uh, percentage, the uh, values of uh, uh, every components of this value chain. But uh, we are a quite lag behind in a rural sanitation system. Uh, since uh, the Bangladesh Bureau of Statistics collects through census data, the rural information, but we are now uh, trying to uh, establish a framework and also a, a master plan for a rural sanitation also. And uh, hopefully uh, the uh, regular data collection will be uh, started from our uh, rural and will also be included uh, to our national sanitation dashboard. In the meantime, oh, we have uh, assigned uh, some MOU uh, with the GWSC and uh, our plan to establish a data management framework, data governance framework, and uh, uh, basic uh, concept of data commanding center 
we have established in a DPHE and they have also started their works under uh, the support of Bangladesh government and uh, uh, BMGF. So uh, ongoing efforts towards uh, our data system strengthening, government flagship program, strengthening of the public data system for sanitation in Bangladesh to build a robust and reliable uh, national Yeah. If you can now wind up in a couple of minutes, please. Okay, I'm 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 going first. Uh, oh. So uh, after this, uh, uh, we have established this uh, uh, data common center. This is a one-stop platform for uh, accessing, sorting, analyzing, and visualizing sanitation data from uh, various sources of level. We have uh, some uh, uh, time-bound uh, assignment, uh, and hopefully, this uh, uh, data what we are actually collecting will be standardized and. Uh, validated so access to information are also uh, working hard and supporting us uh, since uh, they are uh, under prime minister's office and uh, related to uh, provide the information to our sdg trackers so they develop a robust data governance framework and create a data stewardship uh, role among stakeholder organizations so uh, here is the concept of uh, the data governance uh, i'm not going in detail so the other uh, organizations uh, which I have mentioned, the Directorate of Primary Education, we are providing support to uh, our primary education. Uh, all the primary schools, we are providing wash facilities, road transport, highway divisions, Bangladesh Bureau of Statistics, Public Sports Department, uh, Department of Shipping, some other organizations are like this. IMIS uh, has already been introduced and in every urban project, we are introducing this IMI system, not only for the sanitation, but also for uh, water supply. So all the information, uh, the holistic information, we are actually collecting and accumulating in our server and uh, uh, chronologically and under a standardized system, we are preserving and uh, all the other informations, including the our business model data collection system. And uh, you can say that providing the service and uh, uh, tariff collection systems all are utilizing uh, this uh, under this uh, IMS platform. So uh, apart from this, some uh, plant tasks that are interministerial coordination, enhancing coverage of uh, national sanitation dashboard, expanding data collection infrastructure, standardizing the data collection protocols, data sharing agreements, and data updating uh, mechanism. SDG 6.2, some other sub indicators, you know that uh, I have already said that uh, the, we have provided improved uh, shared Latin, but it is not uh, actually counted in our safety management sanitation system. So some other indicators we are thinking about, solid waste management system and enhancing uh, city very inclusive sanitation system, some other indicators. So thank you very much from uh, my side. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Bishwas, for a very engaging uh, presentation and the kind of complexities that are involved when you work at the national level and you know relating to the plans the kind of different data systems that are there so i think it was very good in terms of highlighting these issues may i now invite dr roja from nepal dr roja is uh, chief of nwash and institutional support and service advisory support in the department of water supply and sewerage department in government of nepal and i think from my earlier meeting with him, which were only online, that he is very conversant with the kind of activities that are going on in wash sector in Nepal and has been, I think, taking a leadership role in terms of setting up monitoring systems, which are extremely essential to improve over time. So that's something that we are really looking forward to. Over to Rajit. <clears throat> Hi, Namaste and good afternoon, everyone. I'm Rajit Oza from Nepal. Uh, thank you for the opportunity for the presentation. Today, I'm going to present about uh, National Wash MIS, which uh, which not only covers sanitation, but also covers water supply and hygiene as well. Uh, it is a digitized tool for monitoring and planning also. So uh, idea, of, uh, idea of our development of MIS was to support the local governments uh, for the planning of uh, SDG 6.1 and 6.2. So uh, along with the monitoring uh, of all those indicators, which we can see in terms of status, we have let the local government know about what is their goal in terms of SDGs and what is the investment requirement. Uh, this is the back 
in calculation that we have supported them in doing and what can be the financial option. So they can also discuss the financial option inside the overall management information system. So this is one of the example of where, how we are collecting the status. Uh, this is one of the example from uh, Karjana, one of the municipalities uh, of Nepal, where you can see the overall status in terms of uh, JMP ladders. Mostly we have adopted the JMP's indicators. We are also fortunate to, you know, fortunate to get the JMP support in terms of improvement of these indicators. And we are also doing few improvement in these indicators now and then, and the discussion on improvement of those indicators are going on, but mostly aligned with, these are mostly aligned with JMP's indicators as Rick pointed out before. So this is the status that how much we have collected the data, uh, more than among 753, more than 258 local governments have finished the data collection, which will allow them to know the status. Then they will do the prioritization of the projects which can be the project bank for the provincial governments and the federal governments as well. And then overall planning cost can be calculated and which we can see in terms of wash plan of 158 municipalities and rural municipalities. As I mentioned before, the calculation of investment requirements can also be calculated. This we have adopted based on the life cycle cost assessment, where we talk about the capital investment, we talk about the capital maintenance investments, uh, we talk about the operational expenditures. We talk about the direct support, capacity building support. Uh, uh, and uh, we, we we talk about how much total investment will be required. And um, so based on this one, we'll know how much investment will be required in one local government and how much investment will be required in the overall federal government. So this is allowing us to plan for the investment as well. And this is one of the example. Uh, that shows uh, how much investment will be required based upon the local government's prioritization. So uh, to support this, we identified there are a few governance pillars that should also be assessed. And we try to link it with the citywide inclusive sanitation uh, indicators as well. Uh, for example, how are the local governments updating the database and uh, how they are using so it falls under the responsibility and accountability indicators of citywide inclusive sanitation. Similarly, we are also seeing what are the local legal frameworks are present so that they could be able to regulate, they could be able to plan, they could be able to uh, formulate the guidelines. So if they can't formulate it, uh, the support from federal and provincial government will be necessary. So we are trying to identify the support, necessary support for the local government based on these data sets. So not only the output related data sets, we are also supporting them in terms of the process data sets that will, that will help them to strengthen the overall was system. So uh, this is like whether they have the human resource available or not, uh, whether they are whether they have the TOR available or not, how they are in terms of the organogram of local governments, whether they are getting the adequate training or not. So these kind of areas also are under the discussion inside NWASH MIS. Then we talk about the financing option where we talk about what can be the possible option for those local governments, how much tariff they can generate, how much tax they can use inside WASH, how much transfer they are expecting from federal and federal government, provincial government and other development partners. And also, is there a possibility of like bringing the private sector in terms of trade? How much self supply uh, is happening there, so that so that overall financing landscape could be seen? These all indicators has been taken from the Fracfin initiative that we are doing now um, with the support of WHO. Uh, so this is one of the examples that we did for the water supply service providers, which we are thinking of uh, doing it in sanitation service provider as well. Um, where we would be able to track where, where they are in terms of level and quality of services. I am showing this now for the water supply services, but the similar kind of arrangements can be made for the sanitation service as well, where we can see the key performance indicators such as like regularity of service, the coverage, and this kind of service can be seen in terms of level and quality of water supply service. And then we can see the process indicators of those uh, service provider uh, in terms of operation and management efficiency, for example, like how they are doing the asset management, how they are doing the um, accounting systems, uh, what is the billing efficiency, what is the metering efficiency. So these kind of indicators comes under the operation and management efficiency. And based on this one, the operators, we can try to find out where the operators are lagging in terms of key performance indicator. So this will fall under the federal regulation and we'll know which kind of support will be needed for the service provider. And we're hoping we could make the similar system for the sanitation service providers as well, which will allow us to formulate their business plan 
and which will allow us to build their capacity as well in terms of let's say for example like uh, occupational health and safety uh, containment improvement the transportation improvement and effluent standards and everything so then uh, we are helping the local government track their expenditures um uh, where we will know where, whether they are spending in terms of uh, planning or not uh, whether the support came as expected or not and what we can we do to improve the investment inside the local governments uh, so till now the household sanitation only has been measured in terms of sanitation services there are very few service providers in sanitation landscape mostly on site on site sanitation practices so uh, once the regulation is formulated, we, that is in draft stage, once the regulation is formulated, it will be our responsibility to build the sanitation service providers through the licensing and everything. And uh, only few fecal loss management improvement uh, management units. So uh, once the capital investment goes there, uh, we'll try to track the institutional data as well. Uh, and only Kathmandu Valley has the wastewater treatment unit on operation. So. Uh, because of that one, the service providers related data that I showed in the water supply facilities are not available to us in sanitation facilities. But as soon as the regulation will be in the field, uh, this kind of data will come inside the ANWASH MIS. So uh, this is the wastewater effluent standard that uh, uh, federal government has uh, uh, federal government has approved so far. And from this, we can see there is a need for the utility. There is a need for the effluent standard monitoring. There is a need for the containment monitoring. There is a need for the transportation monitoring. Uh, there is a need for the monitoring for the like whole sanitation value chain. As I mentioned before, uh, uh, we, we can customize the KPIs for the service providers. For example, we can talk about the service coverage. We can talk, talk about service level, accessibility, reliability, and operation and management process related indicators such as like how they handle the asset management. This can fall under the technical operation, how they are doing the financial management, inspection and organizational right. management inside that operator. So the, this, this, this is under the draft regulation which is allowing us to build the management information system, which is allowing us to help them develop their own business plan based on those KPIs. So a few way forwards that I'm putting on is uh, we can use secondary data sets also, not only, the, uh, not only the primary data set, and this can come uh, from the beginning. For example, low income community can be one of the data. Those data sources are already uh, in other data platforms and if we can make the overall data platform interoperable those kind of data sets can come inside our system um, the categorization of lic can be made based on that one and we can easily integrate it into the national wash mis the one thing that uh, that is creating the hindrance in overall planning is the suitability analysis of the technologies because uh, this can be double pits this can be fecal loss management or this can be wastewater so and based on that one the planning cost can vary on capital investment, on operation investment. So the suitability analysis is going to be very much important for us to plan the sanitation service and integration inside uh, and wash MIS will be also important. And based on the, our water supply example, where we are trying to develop the utilities career path, we are trying to help them develop the business plan. We're trying to help the KPIs and also we are trying to develop the tariff calculator so that the local government would be able to fix the tariff for the operators as well. So this is uh, from my side. Uh, any questions will be welcome later on. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rajit ji. This was excellent in terms of capturing both the links to GMP, which I think earlier Rick talked about, but also very much to uh, your own plans and investment and how does monitoring system link to all this. I think it was excellent presentation. Uh, let me now invite Aditi. Aditi actually works with our center uh, in India, and she's been associated with us for the last 10 years. And she leads our activities in both communications as well as in terms of uh, improving monitoring systems. And we work both at as state level, national level, as well as local level. Over to you, Aditi. Thank you, Professor Meera. Uh, I am going to talk about uh, the performance assessment system for water and sanitation services in India. And uh, previous speakers talked about how uh, there is often uh, no data on nationalized data on on-site sanitation 
sanitation systems which are more prevalent or uh, the need to track uh, uh, you know the impact of investments and plan for investments in uh, uh, infrastructure and pass also touches upon some of uh, uh, those uh, issues some of those uh, solutions uh, for india uh, when uh, pass was yeah, so PASS was initiated in 2009 and was housed at, uh, you know, SEPT University. And at the time it was conceptualized, that was a period of uh, major investments um, uh, in infrastructure, in water and sanitation in India. But uh, at that time, very little was known about the impacts that this uh, infrastructure uh, was uh, uh, doing on uh, the improvement in service levels. And uh, of course, you cannot uh, try and improve what uh, you cannot even measure. So uh, the experience of our team was that data was available. A lot of data was available with the uh, cities who were mandated to provide these services. But it was very disaggregated and not in a usable format. Uh, it was paper based and you know never analyzed and that is what uh, past tried to uh, 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 that is what past tried to uh, work on it uh, uh, conceptualized moving from a work, uh, vicious cycle of you know no measurement no monitoring and deteriorating uh, services to a constant uh, measurement and monitoring of performance uh, with some uh, in agreed upon indicators and you know setting the goals and priorities which will lead to continuous improvement uh, and with that uh, uh, CUS developed this uh, pass slb plus framework which touched upon uh, these four uh, sectors water supply sanitation solid waste storm water and uh, had uh, indicators on uh, around five uh, thematic areas uh, and there were 32 key performance indicators and many other, uh, you know, local drill down indicators uh, for uh, measuring and monitoring uh, service delivery. Uh, PASS was not just uh, uh, an exercise by the university, it was also aligned with the national service level benchmarking initiative by Government of India and was uh, uh, developed with a lot of uh, review of international and Indian efforts, uh, stakeholder consultations, etc. And we also attempted to uh, localize uh, the indicators and suit them, uh, suit the framework to local context. Uh, and like I said, uh, it was not a, a university driven exercise. It was uh, it was owned by the government and we made a lot of efforts to uh, work with the central state and city level governments. It was aligned to the national service level benchmarking initiatives and uh, 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 institutionalized through uh, MOUs and we worked with the uh, uh, government to uh, provide support on uh, various uh, uh, government users and regulatory agencies and in using the data. Uh, as you can see, these are the indicators across uh, each of the uh, uh, service chains of the sectors and there were 32 indicators and like I said, uh, there was an attempt to localize or uh, suit this to Indian context where uh, we realized a lot of cities did not have uh, 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 sewer networks and uh, uh, on-site systems were very prevalent. So this set of sand benchmarks were uh, uh, introduced, which you know also showed uh, uh, service levels on on-site systems. And uh, there was an attempt to include uh, indicators on equity and uh, the coverage in, especially in slums. Uh, and this was not a one-off exercise and the idea was to do this at scale and we realized that uh, uh, we required some digital systems to reduce the human effort and the geographical effort uh, that is uh, required to uh, move at scale and uh, for that we uh, developed this in industry academic partnership with the Tata Consultancy Services and developed a, uh, an online portal uh, pass.org.in which uh, consisted of an uh, online module uh, which cities could use to self-report you know, sit in their cities and just report themselves, but also had a validation checks uh, to keep, you know, uh, the quality of data in check. Uh, and with this online module, uh, uh, we try to provide a training uh, at, to all these participating cities and roll out in many states and collect this data annually uh, and also try and, uh, uh, you know, verify uh, some part of it on ground. Uh, the results of these are published 
by the cities, by the states uh, as part of uh, as part of Gazette. Uh, and over the years, the result is that uh, the first exercise took one, one and a half years to collect the first round of data. And now we see that uh, after many years, uh, this in two months, we are able to, uh, uh, you know, finish this annual exercise for all cities. And we are not just uh, collecting the data, uh, uh, collecting and accumulating data. Uh, uh, the data, we've made it digital. So uh, we made it into digital information. But then uh, in order to use it, there is a need to have it in a format uh, that is, you know, that could provide some insights. And so we have developed all these uh, uh, dashboards uh, which are focused on different stakeholders and uh, uh, different purposes that use this uh, big repository of data to provide some insights into uh, how uh, um, in how uh, services can be improved. And this uh, information has found a wide range of users uh, for data-driven governments, from government agencies to researchers to financial institutions and also uh, regulators and consultants. And it's not just uh, reporting and improving on the services. Uh, we have, there have been over the years, there have been efforts to move this from uh, just uh, service, uh, you know, looking at service delivery to uh, looking beyond into, you know, the uh, using this data to look at the uh, SDG performance or to move into uh, uh, assessing uh, CVIS, uh, citywide inclusive sanitation or ESG assessment or credit worthiness of cities using some of the, you know, local action indicators and also to look at water governance in a uh, uh, context of uh, climate change. Uh, the reason, uh, one of the reasons this has uh, sustained so far is uh, because of the government support and the government uh, institutionalization. And uh, uh, this has also been institutionalized through intergovernmental fund transfers and the publication of uh, this information every year by the cities uh, is mandated by the, the, uh, the, the Finance Commission, which dictates these inter intergovernmental fund transfers and that has resulted in sustaining this uh, program for so long. Uh, not uh, So now that we have a system in place for measuring and regular monitoring of data, efforts have also been made over the years to look at data quality. And as I mentioned, the system looks uh, has a system, uh, uh, has built in validation checks to look at quality of data, but also uh, uh, there, there are modules to look at uh, the reliability of data, for example, in terms of whether the the information that you are putting it, whether it is a you know rough guesstimate by the city officials or it is backed by primary uh, household surveys. And over the years, uh, with efforts and training, we have seen that uh, you can see on the right side information for Gujarat. We have seen that uh, from reliability D, uh, there has been a lot of improvement uh, uh, towards reliability A, which is uh, you know data records that are updated regularly based on. Uh, very uh, best available uh, procedures. And if we talk about uh, uh, inclusive, uh, uh, if we talk about uh, data strengthening or data governance for urban sanitation, the, the uh, uh, latest prevailing uh, theory of change is citywide inclusive sanitation. And even though PASS is uh, in its 15th year now, and CVS is relatively uh, uh, new, we can see that many aspects, uh, most of the aspects of CVS are uh, reflected uh, in our PASS and can be used to uh, uh, measure uh, the CVS uh, uh, elements. And uh, to look at, uh, uh, monitoring beyond you know city level pass provides this uh, system to look at monitoring at city level and uh, it has triggered many more uh, monitoring systems that go beyond city level and look at sanitation monitoring across the uh, service chain to look at uh, how uh, service is provided for on site systems how data is collected how private uh, operators are uh, involved and we have looked uh, and we have tried to develop more monitoring systems such as uh, these three are mentioned here which look at uh, uh, you know how we can uh, look at what type of uh, septic tanks are available in the city and we have sanitap uh, which can uh, do custom questionnaires to do that we have sanitrack uh, which can look at end to end monitoring of uh, uh, disludging of septic tanks uh, and uh, we have sani chatbot which is a you know whatsapp based uh, text based uh, uh, monitoring system for uh, looking at the functioning of FSTPs. And uh, 
to conclude over the years pass has sustained uh, it was not a pilot it operated at scale and you can see here how it has scaled up from you know beginning uh, with 400 cities to over 1000 cities now and has sustained for many years uh, and uh, yeah that that i will conclude there uh, over to you uh, professor meera thanks aditi uh, this is of course an activity that we have been involved in from the center and we worked with as aditi said uh, worked with uh, state governments as well as national governments in taking forward this whole idea and sustaining it over the years. So thanks very much, Aditi. Let me open, let me, before I open up for question and answer, uh, I just wanted to highlight that a lot of uh, people, participants have put in links to various documents that they have worked on, which relate to the kind of discussions that we had. So it would be good to take a look and download whatever you think are likely to be useful for you. Uh, may I have everybody's, uh, let me start with a question I think that has been put on the question chat. Uh, and it's put to you, Rick, in terms of that you highlighted some data in red in your presentation in terms of the data that is missing. But what are the other key challenges that you think are needed in terms of, and let me embellish this question a bit, that the kind of uh, examples that you saw from the three countries in terms of kind of data systems, kind of efforts that different governments are making, both in terms of developing their plan, but also introducing uh, monitoring systems and so on. So what do you see as a good linkage between the two? Thank you, Mira. And um, I'm happy to start, but I think really the, the national um, partners here are in a better position to talk about the key challenges for strengthening data systems because that's what they're doing. But I can reiterate that um, at least one of the challenges for SDG monitoring at least is that a lot of the information that are collected at the local scale are not aggregated to the national scale, maybe they're not covering the entire population. And I think there's a real question about who has access to the data and, and the ability to use it. So I'm very happy to see the open data portals um, in, 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 in the three countries that have been participating today. I, I do want to reiterate that um, regulators are an excellent um, way for data on services to be collected and made publicly available. And Mira, I take your point that maybe in these countries there aren't independent regulators uh, in the way that there are in some of the African countries, but still even without a formal independent regulatory body, there can be institutions that yeah. form, uh, perform the, the roles of regulation um, and that can still uh, help in both making data publicly available and improving service delivery. So the specific types of data, I mean, I mentioned that for these countries, apart from India, we didn't have national data on centralized wastewater treatment, but more generally, I think data on the on-site sanitation is what's really lacking. And especially just on that, you know, on the facility itself, um, how well is it constructed and how well is it containing wastes? I see, I see more focus on FSM and trucking and FSTPs than on just you know, is that thing really a septic tank and is it really containing the wastes? Um, but I'd like to hear from others. And also, Batsy, uh, I think you had some some reflections on this topic to share as well. Go ahead. I think you put up. Your yeah. Hand. So um, I think one of the biggest challenges like um, um, two, two, two kind of infancy periods that we need to look up on and uh, start uh, handling the challenge. The first one is the governance infancy because we are talking mostly service providers from the local government's angle. Um, but I think the major capacity and major knowledge development and everything falls under the federal government's responsibility. So it's like how you trickle down those capacity building initiative to local governments uh, becomes very much important. And uh, also uh, it should be 
uh, the realization of local governments that the was systems data is going to impact them is going to be like a biggest challenge and maybe that is also the biggest opportunity that we can that we can use similarly the service providers in fancy also plays role for example i was talking about the uh, right now the sanitation services are not even licensed in the absence of regulation so uh, how do we manage to bring them inside the regulatory landscape and how we can use those operational data in order to make ourselves better is going to be very much important so once the service providers are aligned uh, the regulators are not the one which are which will going to be enforcing them to operate but will be the one who will be facilitating them to operate uh, according to business plan so rather than being enforceable how the government government system becomes facilitative towards the service provider to bring the data forward is going to be very much a uh, way forward i think to cope with that challenge i think thank you thanks Rajesh. i think shishin did you want to Come in, you put up. So oh, thank you very much. Actually, uh, regarding the data collection, that is uh, the another part, and uh, but establishing a sustainable value chain of the waste management, that is another part. Uh, what uh, Rajit actually uh, said, it is uh, really correct uh, in uh, South Asian region in Bangladesh. You know that the uh, from the uh, higher end, I mean, uh, from government and service uh, uh, provider as uh, level. Uh, for the rural and also for the city corporations or the municipalities, it's quite so okay. Under uh, project-based activities, the development works are going on, but after completion of this project, uh, you know that the uh, acceptancy and uh, sustaining this uh, development activities and providing their uh, every components data to uh, the uh, data uh, preserving center, uh, that is not we are finding in a good shape. Uh, yes, uh, uh, establishing a regulatory body, it's a huge challenge still now. But uh, before that, uh, uh, for Bangladesh context, uh, development of sustainable service is also very, very much important. Yes, we are uh, uh, doing uh, a lot. Uh, our different organizations, all the sector partners are uh, really coming forward for uh, providing these facilities. Uh, from my uh, previous experience without uh, giving uh, certain services, or whatever activities for uh, this uh, uh, improvement of the value chain, this will not be actually uh, sustainable. So after strengthening the local government institutions, uh, the root level, the villages, the rural, the peri-urban, urban, all of those, so the accountability, the responsibility need to be grown first from their side. Yes, capacity building and awareness campaign program is a uh, huge from our uh, country. Uh, our uh, We have uh, different MOU with different uh, development partners. BNGS comes forward and uh, we have established a, uh, a TA hub uh, and CB hub. CB hub means uh, capacity building hub. The other uh, institutions, uh, sector partners like SNV, Water Aid, all of those are really uh, uh, providing a good job, a uh, good service, and uh, our local government institutions members, the technical members and the uh, political members uh, uh, coming there and uh, getting uh, knowledge uh, of every components of this value chain. But uh, at the end, uh, uh, what uh, can I say? That uh, the service, uh, sustaining the service, uh, goes to the those institutions and providing this uh, information to our central level that is also uh, be strengthened uh, from their side and we the central government just uh, could help them with different uh, phenomena something like this thanks Shishi. i know it's a balancing between national government and local government and how do you connect the two through better monitoring systems and what is role of each level is very important. I see we have Batsi Rai. If, I hope I'm pronouncing it correct. Would you like to come in with your question? Thank you, Mira, and thank you to all the speakers. So just to quickly introduce myself, I work with WHO's International Network of Drinking Water and Sanitation Regulators. And I really just want to reinforce some of the points that have been made around their own governance accountability and really like uh, the point that Rick was mentioning about who this data goes to. And um, maybe just to preface uh, my statement by saying that when we talk about regulation, I think we're not necessarily referring to an independent regulatory institution. 
because sometimes that that comes further down the path. But what we are talking about is oversight. Ultimately, who has the responsibility of making sure that these services are being delivered, that they are inclusive for everyone, um, that they're affordable, and that they are quality, good quality services and effectively um, safe. So I think there are a lot of um, countries that we can learn, for, uh, learn from in this space in that they might not have established independent regulatory institutions, but they are conducting this oversight and that's a good starting point. But um, specifically when it comes to data, I think the key point to emphasize is that ultimately the bug has to stop with someone and someone has to make sure that I've gathered all this data, we're able to understand what is happening in the sector relative to our own policy goals and where do we need to adjust. And like Rick said, regulators or, or persons with a responsibility of oversight are really well placed um, to do that. Um, I'm aware that um, there are some efforts that have been made to establish these entities of oversight in Bangladesh, in Nepal, and in Odisha State in, in, in India. Um, but more importantly, um, also thinking about how that can be done at a regional level so that there are more regional approaches um, to this oversight. How do you harmonize indicators that are being used for um, um, regulating, overseeing sanitation and drinking water services, making sure that as a region, we are all moving towards the same, uh, the same goal. Like, thank you. Thanks, Batira. Uh I don't think there are any specific questions. If you want to come in, I have my personal opinions in terms of this whole regulatory perspective, but maybe I don't should not really go into that here. <laughs> but I think what is coming out very clearly, and maybe Rajit and uh, others can, and Shishi Raditi can come in as to that it is true that to have effective monitoring and effective data systems. There has to be oversight by some agency. Now, whether that agency can be part of the existing government structures itself, and which is what I thought I heard from both, to some extent from India and in Nepal. Uh, the Bangladesh one seems more complex than the other two countries, but so there is oversight. It's a question of isolating or identifying clearly who these agencies are, what their roles could be, and how does the monitoring system support uh, performing these functions better. So that is something that we really need to identify and highlight and understand better also. Because I think the whole regulatory perspective is very much linked to independent service providers, and that is not something that is likely to be the case in uh, South Asia, to a great extent, that it's not that there are. The other major issue seems to be that there are multiple service providers at the local level. And I think what Rajit was also highlighting, that the clarity in terms of who is providing the services, local government or private service providers, and what is their relationship, these are issues that need to become part of the monitoring system itself. And part of, in a way, indirectly, whatever we call it, regulation or supervision or whatever we term that we give to, certainly. I think there were a lot of questions in terms of data quality improvements. And that's something that uh, I don't know what efforts have been made in these three countries, as well as from uh, uh, Rick and uh, Matsirai from your experience from Africa also, that how can data systems be improved and the quality of monitoring actually can contribute because that is by in to some extent critical to really to have belief in the kind of data that is generated also i have two hands up rajit and then rick rajit go ahead rick you want to go first or <laughs> you let me go ahead rajit okay so just wanted uh, just just wanted to highlight one one of the one of the things we are planning to do it is in research phase but i think it will it will come Good. So what we did was like uh, we're capturing the georeference data and there were like a lot of images which which were used uh, in order to achieve the georeferencing. Right. But uh, when we started collecting the data, we knew that these image sources also can be one form of data sources. If we properly do the image processing, we'll, we, we can see where are the data risk. So, for example, like if one tap, if one tap of 
if one water tap is broken in image and someone has put this is a this is in good condition then this data to uh, these two data are violating and image processing can easily say this data is violating this this has the like risk of violation of the this has the risk in terms of quality of data so this way we can create the data patches which are like uh, which are which are more risky data sets and there we can we can focus more on validation so in sanitation for example like in the public toilets if the toilet pan is not clean as it should be but if the data is coming like it is clean and if the image is there so the validation would be a lot more easier so i think we need to uh, we we can use some innovative solutions in validating the data and machine learning and image processing can also be one of the examples that we can push forward that is nepal's case so just wanted to highlight that maybe there there can be other examples also but this is one of the case from nepal thank you yeah um on the question of data quality so one of the questions was is digitization the way to ensure data quality and i, I think digitization is really important but and it certainly increases data accessibility but not necessarily quality um, and it relates to this this tension I see between um, the types of information you can get from routine household surveys and the types of information you can get from routine administrative data systems. And there's a transition. Um, and I think the three countries here are at, at stages of that transition. If we look at you know the high income countries, uh, they don't collect data on wash in household surveys. They have comprehensive administrative systems. Um, and the very low income countries, they don't have any administrative system. So it's only household surveys, but these countries they're in transition. So um, I think there are challenges when you try to build up an administrative data source, um, one uh, around data quality. One, one challenge is around just a geographic scope. And are you really capturing everyone? And uh, especially as administrative data sets are in their early days, there are data quality problems. You know, it's the the stronger performing local government institutes that give data, and then the weaker ones don't give data. So then the data aren't representative. It takes time to get to a place where you have reliable administrative data. And I think in all three of these countries, you're you're making steps towards that and advancing it. Um, I think ideally there's a primary reliance on routine administrative data, but with some kind of ground truthing or Rajit, you mentioned validation, you know, spot checks. Um, just go to the field, whether that's households or service providers, and you know, check that what you're getting from your main source of data is really reliable because and again, especially when these systems are new, you know, there are incentives to take shortcuts or to say things are better than they are. So there, there are challenges with data validity in the early days of administrative data systems. Yeah. Thanks. Aditi, you want to comment? And also, if you want to highlight uh, more the links related to possibilities of climate and sanitation, and how would you contribute to that? Uh, I also, first, I wanted to uh, again touch on the uh, digit digitization and the technology aspects. While technology and dig digitization does not necessarily, you know, mean better quality data, but it also, but it provides pathways to improve the quality of data. And I mentioned uh, the system of, uh, you know, data mentioning the data reliability in the uh, uh, pass module. While that means uh, manually, you know, putting in uh, reliability A, B, C. There are also a parallel system of uh, automatic data validation checks so there are around 300 uh, you know uh, formulas or data checks that uh, check the quality of data so if you mentioned x number of households in this uh, you reported x number of households last year you cannot uh, you know it, it just shows a warning that you cannot show a lower number of households or connections this year so those kind of checks the amount of groundwater you've extra extracted cannot be more than the total amount of water uh, you know production you have reported this year it enables those kind of pathways the other thing is uh, it also uh, uh, enables, uh, uh, you know, the human uh, uh, the, the human mistakes or the human oversight, it eliminates that that could happen. So, for example, when we uh, worked in sanitation and monitoring uh, uh, the the uh, desludging services in, uh, in a few cities, uh, they used to uh, work with logbooks or even, you know, the the the. Uh, 
provision of uh, water supply they work with log books uh, with uh, you know how much time the water has been supplied how much time the pumps have been working uh, or how many times uh, uh, the desludging truck went to this house but then as soon as we introduced uh, uh, an app to monitor this uh, 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 monitor this service uh, we could uh, you know suddenly start collecting automate collecting the geolocation and then we could track whether this uh, desludging has happened and whether it has gone to the correct place or not we could automate uh, checking that and we did not have to physically uh, check it so it provides pathways uh, and uh, to touch on uh, the uh, aspects of climate uh, while uh, climate is a, a very important topic right now and uh, there is there is still uh, you know evidence building on how sanitation contributes or is uh, uh, helpful in uh, mitigation efforts while there is you know evidence is still building uh, we do know that the you know work in sanitation would be very very much important in climate adaptation and uh, at this point there is a, a big need uh, to focus on that because the ill effects of uh, climate change uh, are very much uh, visible uh, and impact uh, sanitation and water so uh, that is how uh, climate comes in uh, in this uh, sector at this point thanks aditi I don't see any hands up. I had a sort of small query to put to all the panelists that everybody talked of the need for household survey on a regular basis and that they should be good, there should be local data available. In all the three countries that we looked at, and I assume even in Africa, this would be true that property tax is a major source of income and there is regular household surveys that are done for updating property tax database. It's uh, once in three years, once in four years. This uh, is taken up in across all cities in India at least. And I assume that this will be true in Nepal, Bangladesh and so on also. Would that be a possibility to consider? So it's not a, the kind of surveys that Rick and team uh, depend on in terms of uh, surveys that are how do I say, uh, representative of uh, through appropriate statistical method selected, but property tax is a 100% survey that you will get. And it's done every three to four years in all, in India, across all six states, all cities, this is being done. But we have never attempted to tap this source to gather more and better information about water and sanitation, not only sanitation, and in fact, to some extent, solid waste also, it would be possible to do. And whether any thought has been given to this, we've made some attempts, uh, but still need to do much more. But it would be interesting to hear whether something like this would be possible in Bangladesh and Nepal also. Shishir Kone. Yeah, you have rightly mentioned, actually, uh, you know, that... Uh, First time, because where there is no service, uh, household uh, survey is the primary tools to get information and collecting data, preserving the real, you can say the situation analysis. So when after uh, getting this information, when development activities actually we are uh, conducting, uh, let's say not so a uh, huge scale, but uh, gradually uh, in one project, uh, according to my experience in uh, 23 municipalities project, uh, we have established uh, the complete value chain for uh, 11 municipalities. So now after uh, getting the baseline database, so now establishing this uh, complete value chain, the automatically the informations are coming from the municipalities. So no need to get uh, uh, the information by again uh, household survey. So Yes, uh, we are thinking that uh, at a certain stage, we will provide the service and uh, gradually those information uh, automatically will come from every household uh, and uh, from every component of the value chain. That's why uh, we have the expanded version of the IMIS for the every municipalities collecting the household data, uh, whether they are getting uh, quality water, whether they are uh, getting uh, the waste management services, both the uh, FS and uh, municipal solid waste. So these are under a trial basis. Already we have uh, completed uh, uh, 
around 10 municipalities they are doing well and uh, based on this service some other entrepreneurs are coming forward and uh, uh, the municipalities also uh, getting habituated on it so i think uh, if uh, this concept uh, can be expanded to other municipalities uh, i think the better information so uh, will be gathered and collected preserved and uh, uh, no need again and again the baseline survey yeah thanks yeah that should certainly be looked at uh... I think I'm being told to do final remarks. <laughs> I thought it was better to get final remarks from all of you, but maybe I am supposed to do. I think it was. Uh, can I? Can you please remove the slide so I can at least see everybody's faces? It's much better. <laughs> uh, I think it was a great discussion. I don't think that we've come to any. Uh, conclusion and I don't think it was expected that we would come to a conclusion through just one uh, webinar like this but I think it raised many important questions and it is excellent to learn about what's happening uh, both at the global level from JMP which we know about but it was good to hear Rick say in the kind of processes that they have also adopted as well as the country level experiences. And I hope that IWA and our institute will take this forward in terms of how do you build on the kind of discussions that we had and how do you go one step forward in terms of whether it is through a regulator or whether through some kind of a reporting agency, whether through household surveys or IMS that he was talking about, or the kind of NWASH system that Nepal has introduced. So thank you very much, everybody. And I think we've managed to retain most of our participants in the thing. So hopefully it was very interesting. Okay. Thank thanks, you for the everybody. thank you for the opportunity. No, and we look forward to doing this again maybe a few months down the line. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam. Thank you very much.